night, guys. It is another yuck, rainy night here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. At least it's not a cold night, believe it or not, here on a... It is a Wednesday night. It is Wednesday, December 7th, 22. And uh, I was... Here I am back at medium.com. Imagine that. Uh, Sam Mitchell back in the doomosphere, the bottomless pit of doom and gloom at medium.com. My entire life has been turned upside down with doom here. Uh, <laughs> goodbye to the mainstream media from here on out. So anyway, I'm starting, you know, figuring out as I read dozens and dozens of these essays from all of these writers from all over the spectrum, uh, you know, writing intelligently about the collapse of a planet. Uh, I, I don't feel like the doomosphere is quite the echo chamber that uh, I, I thought it was, so I'm sitting here making some new doomer friends on medium.com. But one thing I'm starting to figure out, the, the more people down here in this rabbit hole that I meet, there's, there's two basically different kinds of essays you find on here. And, and there's the straightforward, you know, serious essays uh, about, you know, what's happening on this planet. Uh, what's happening to this civilization, uh, to this planet, all of our fellow earthlings and everything else. You know, some serious, important work being done. And then on the other side of the ledger, there is, uh, I, I'm, I'm finding more and more of these people who understand that the collapse of a planet is a great source of sick, dark, ironic, twisted humor that you might as well laugh. You might as well laugh and, and uh, get some sick, twisted humor out of the uh, out of the ride down as we uh, as this whole shit show comes crashing down. So maybe what I'm going to start doing is maybe I will, uh, since I have five hours more of darkness uh, every day than I have during the summer, and I'm bouncing off the walls of my seven foot by seven foot little uh, prison cell here, uh, maybe I'll just start doing two chronicles of the collapse, one a serious one, and one a little more lighthearted, so maybe I will come back later and get to this long, serious piece by a fellow named Mike Meyer. But Mike has some humorous ones too, but this is one who, this uh, writer just, just came out of nowhere, never heard of this person uh, until a few hours ago, calling, I guess, herself anti-grav, A-U-N-T-I-E, grav, anti-grav, I can't even tell with this hazy photo whether this person is male or female, assumedly uh, anti-grav is a doomer chick. Uh, she has 864 followers, including me now. All she says about herself is she is a reader, fixer, and maker. And one thing she is not is an apocalyptimist. Uh, Anti-grav anti uh, has had enough of the... Uh, <laughs> enough of the hopium. And uh, this is her little... Uh, this was actually from a couple of months ago. Her essay titled simply, Optimism is Hilarious. Yes, it is in a very dark, sick, tragic sort of way. Uh, optimism is hilarious. Okay, anti-grav, 
tell us why optimism is hilarious. <clears throat> Far be it from me to, to pander to your doom-scrolling adventures and fantasies of superheroes saving us from the robot apocalypse, but sometimes I just get a little tired of the obfuscation of our actual situation. Even Caitlin Johnstone, and I remember covering this uh, very, very essay. You know, Caitlin Johnstone is one of these uh, serious uh, little lefties who I'm also subscribed to. Even Caitlin Johnstone, <clears throat> who is a magician with existential skeptical turn of phrase, seems to have become optimistic amid the actual doominess of contemporary circumstances. And then she links you over to Caitlin's, uh, Caitlin's post, which I covered here on this channel a few weeks ago, titled, Our Entire Civilization is Fake and Stupid. I can't remember uh, how Caitlin went. Uh, how did Caitlin go uh, apocalyptic at the end of that one? Anyway, moving on from Caitlin. <clears throat> Civilization itself has become an evolutionary trap of comforts and conveniences for our species, while nature is about to dispatch us all to dispatch us with all of the usual means simultaneously. Fire, drowning, famine, pestilence. As much as it is uplifting and entertaining to think that terrestriality, I have never heard the word terrestriality, meaning uh, walking the earth. I don't know uh, I, I, where she came up. I, I, have, I am 63 years old. I have five years of college, a uh, reporter and editor for years. I've read a few books in my life. I have never in my entire life uh, stumbled across the word terrestriality. Can someone help me out here? As much as it is uplifting and entertaining to think that terrestriality will awaken some magical best part of humanity, the environmental statistics and probabilities point out how futile that optimism really is. Scientists keep trying to be nice and send out warnings about things like tipping points in social infrastructure. But when you read the science articles that they are using for reference within the vague generalities of the pablum, you start to see the horror between the lines. Greenland, Pakistan, California, Kentucky, and Mississippi are data points at the very beginning of the graphs, not the stages where we can save the world as we know it, otherwise known as Twalky. 2022 human consumerism is blowing past one and a half C like it was broken down on the side of the Audubon, while politicians are demanding increased oil production and higher stock investments based on debt-based promises to burn and buy perpetually increasing amounts of petro-produced products with our future selves driving to even more pyramid building jobs. I love optimists. I can sit and laugh at them for hours. Even as a majority, a majority, huh, are now 
starting to read about global warming, there is no probable scenario where resentment does not, does not start shooting at all targets of opportunity. Humans don't play nice unless they think there's an adult in the vicinity. And again, another reference I have never heard in my life, TA interwebs prove there isn't, I guess. All right, first she has the word, the word TA, and then a new word, capital I, TA interwebs prove there isn't, I guess, prove there is not an adult in the vicinity. Guys, anyway, uh, so it, when was the last time I found two words I had never heard of? Anyway, anti-grav, congratulations on stumping me twice in three paragraphs. <clears throat> we have evolved to not know the difference between bullies and leaders. Competition will not stop painting targets until everyone can see their direct dependence on each living thing they encounter. In other words, collapse, you know, with a capital C. In other words, collapse is going to be violent and combative because we just haven't created the tools and infrastructure to question our blind faith in unfettered competition for perpetual human extraction of resources. Everyone wants to throw darts at capitalism, but cap capitalism with a capital C, but capitalism with a small c is an emergent phenomenon from our apathy toward aggressive competitors. The majority think, see that fancy money clip? It could be me someday. You want to gain my trust of your optimism? Show me a path through the coming disasters, political upheavals, authoritarian clampdowns, and business as usual busyness that reality is presenting on a daily basis. You don't get to skip the daily mass shootings, floods, political posturing, and genocides either. You have to explain how you are going to end the use of fossil fuels instantly without getting murdered or causing the deaths of billions of people. Jesus is not coming back any more than old Yeller. So anti-grav uh, must be at least a boomer if uh, she's heard of old Yeller. Jesus isn't coming back any more than old Yeller. Poor people are not going to get paid to stay home and not consume useless shit. The middle class, people who have jobs that pay them enough to avoid their families, will not stop buying entertainments that keep their brains in a fog. Rich people are not going to get taxed into oblivion because every tax scheme to tax the rich involves keeping them around to tax again next year. Humans are not going to start contributing more to the planet than they take without first being slammed back to prehistoric levels of population and death rates because inconvenience. Some of the children may be our future, but it is increasingly looking like we are losing the oceans. The out of sight, 
out of mind death of oxygen production in the oceans from overheating and acidification might eventually be enough to put out the fires but we will all be dead long before then. When scientists talk about tipping points, they are not talking about something balancing on a teeter-totter that can be brought back to level when another, another kid climbs on to balance Fat Tony. They are talking about tipping our civilization into a landfill and not being able to get it back because the lakes and rivers dry up or wash towns away. Food production goes to 5% or less because insects die off. Refineries are destroyed and transportation is decimated by global wars over oligarch egos feeding on nationalistic jingoism. Cascading factors. Cascading factors means that instead of seeing one thing go bad, then allowing time for us to realize how stupid we've been and fix it, each drop in our probability of survival adds to the next drop in probability that anything will turn around. The oceans are not going to rise 10 inches and then stop rising because we wish them to stop. We have already taken the carbon from the ground and spewed it into the atmosphere and the effects we are seeing now are from the crap we did decades ago, not from today. The crap we're doing today is a lot worse, not better. We have only slowed down the rate we were increasing our use of fossil fuels, but those rates of increase were so bad that we have no idea how many forests will burn tomorrow, next week, and next month, let alone in two years. <clears throat> Most of the reports scientists are writing about climate are now talking about how the worst case projections were not bad enough, <clears throat> but few people were listening to how bad they were in the first place, except maybe me and five other people because pessimism is bad for business, bad for relationships, and bad for sales. <clears throat> Sometimes a thing gets broke, can't be fixed. Uh, there's some dispute on uh, who that original quote was from. <clears throat> All right. Back to Caitlin Johnstone. Caitlin got the main part right. Human civilization is fake and stupid. It's also backward. We never question the carrying capacity of humanity and watching humans founder and flail around with schemes to keep the fake and stupid economics afloat on promises, faith and greenwashing is like watching Steve Carroll act like stupid is funny. People fall for it every effing time. Optimists are much funnier than stupid people because they have more ladders and buckets full of green paint to trip over. <laughs> Amen, I guess, Sister uh, Antigrav. So good for you. Uh, so more from Antigrav. How much 
how much we are doomed. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to tell you why we're doomed. That's pretty simple and subjective, but anyone can see that the reason we are doomed is because humans are stupid. Speaking of stupid, how about the stupidest pyramid scheme ever? Uh, here's some thoughts on war. Here is, you're right. You're right. It's definitely a sermon. Human, a primate that builds a model of the universe inside its brain and upon, and upon physical maturity moves a model of itself inside that model, avoiding reality at all costs. And to drink minimum. I don't even. <laughs> to drink minimum. Speaking of which, uh, it is time for me to begin my daily to drink minimum and to drink maximum. I have a daily to drink minimum and to drink maximum. And I'm going to go start that and uh, enjoy some more uh, anti grav. And then uh, after I have a drink, maybe we'll come back and uh, check out Mike Myers' more serious post. What's it called? Can we tame the dragon? Can we tame the dragon? I guess we shall find out, Mike. Bye, guys.